when people say to me what is it like living with EB I've always gone with the motto that I have EB but EB is not me My name is Chelsea and I go to college I'm 19. I'm Heather Scary. I'm 28, um, obviously from England. And um, I normally work, but unfortunately due to health complications through EB, um, I had to give up work a couple of years ago. But I am looking to get back into work, so. Heather is my only daughter. Um, her father and I split up when she was very tiny. So it, she's always been my priority. I'm Celia Callahan. I'm Chelsea's grandmother. I uh, have Chelsea on a part-time basis, as I also work. We go on holidays together, we do lots of things together. I went to college and did um, computer and um, software development and web design. We do like the cooking, she likes doing the shopping for the stuff. So EB is basically a blistering of the skin. Um, people with EB don't have the ancrum fibres or the glue, the glue to stick the layers of skin together. It basically means that any kind of friction, rub, knock, our skin blisters or comes off. Um, clothes can affect it. Um, just general friction fr through many, many ways. Um, it affects the internal skin and external skin. Um, it affects the eyes, uh, mouth, throat, that kind of thing. There are three types, simplex, dystrophic and junctional. Uh, Heather has dystrophic, dystrophic recessive, which means that both her father and myself carry the affected gene. And so when Heather was born, uh, unbeknown to us, she had this condition. First time I saw her, she was bandaged, dressed from head to foot. 28 years ago, the condition was even less well known, so I was lucky that one of the nurses in the actual special care unit recognised the condition and sent for the dermatologist, who sent for the EB nurse expert from Great Ormond Street in London. Uh, we go to the hospital, when she was little it was about every four months, um, and now she's at St Thomas's, it's about every six months, unless she's got to have any interventions, in which case we're here more often. We seem to have been here quite a lot this year. She's very bright, very breezy, gets on with it, but it does have a huge impact on life. I have a lot of medicine to help me with pain and uh, skin, and it's sometimes horrible to change the bandages because Sometimes the skin's come with the bandages. It impacted more on us than Chelsea because Chelsea just got on with it, you know. Whereas we didn't do it, no. But she did. I'm still a person. It just happens that my skin isn't like anyone else's. I live with day to day. It, I have good days and I have bad days. We've just got on with life. She's travelled, she drives now. You know, we've, we've, she's read, led a normal life with the exception that every single day she has to go through the trauma of having dressings done for a couple of hours. In terms of um, when people approach me, if I'm in the wheelchair, they don't approach me. They approach my mum or my friend because the stigma is that if you're in a wheelchair, you've also got something wrong with your mental capacity as well. Um, so if I've handed some clothes over in a shop to buy, they then ask my mum or my, my friend, does she want a hanger? I do like people to get to know me as myself, not as a disability. Um, I find it quite difficult um, meeting kind of potential relationships. Um, I don't go into detail about my condition straight away if I maybe meet somebody online. Um, because they see the disability before they see me. The general public don't, still don't accept that people are different. There's still a uh, factor.
character, people won't look at them and, and they think that what they've got is catching. Some people's don't play they don't stand. And it couldn't cannot actually have an impact on on the young person's well being in the respect that it can stop them from going out and it can stop them from doing things that they want to do because they think that they they look strange um, and that they don't necessarily get accepted. I mean, Heather's always been very lucky. She's always been accepted by her peers, however she looks. I've, I've got four carers, two of which are my best friends. One's my mum and one's another lady who I've known all my life. They all know or understand that I know my skin probably the best, but we kind of work as a team. Bandage dressing times, bandage times, that we work as a team together. When her friends are doing them, it's like having a party upstairs. It is a social time, like, they're my friends, my two friends that do my bandages, they're my friends first. Bandages is a painful, stressful time, so if there can be a little bit of humour come out of it, brilliant, it makes it easier. When children reach a certain age, 16, 17, 18, you're not the one that the professionals are talking to anymore. It, and that was, that was a huge learning curve for me when we came here that they weren't talking to me, they were talking to Heather, and very often would say, is it all right if your mum knows? And I used to think, excuse me? <laughs> you know. But absolutely right, because this is part of the independence. The one thing that they do do is if you look blank and you don't have a clue what they're talking about, they will talk to you more in layman's terms. He actually asked me what he should give her, and I'm like, well, you're the doctor. But he said, no, you are more up to date with her condition than what he actually is. So what shall I prescribe her? So I told him, can you give her the antibiotics? And I told him, and they are working amazing, aren't they? Mm. Don't ever be afraid to ask uh, and not <coughs> assume, because you're the professional, that you know it all, and if you want to know things, ask. They ask Chelsea now because she's 19. They ask Chelsea, are you okay with that, Chelsea? Um, will you try? They don't just, you know, say this or is what I'm doing. on her and say, you've got to do this. They'll ask her if she can, she's happy to do it. Don't do what I did and read all the books because you scare yourself to bits about what could happen. Always ask for help. Help is there. It's not always as dark as it seems, because you've got a good team. Yeah. Don't let things stop you. It, there, there will be a hell of a lot of challenges, and if you deal with it with quite an open mind, which I can understand can be difficult for some people, you'll hit the challenge, and then you will hopefully get through it and pick yourself back up again. She now has faith that it is it's going to be a better life for her. But since becoming a Christian, She's put so much faith in God being there for her through difficult times. Like she's gone from the darkness into the light and she can see a better life ahead of her now. Don't let people say you can't do things because you can. There are so many things that people can do and I understand EB is a huge, huge issue. But don't let it stop you. Don't, don't let it get in the way of what you want to do. It is going to be with you but just try and... Try and not let it get in your way. Don't let it rule you. You rule EB.